Hi, everybody. For the next 45 minutes, together we will revisit the 1999 Cleveland Indians baseball season. A season filled with spectacular individual performances, record-breaking offense, team success, unprecedented fan support, and a little heartache. Well, okay, maybe a lot of heartache. It is going to take a long time for all of us to forget that division series loss against the Boston Red Sox. But there is no denying that the six-month journey to get to our fifth straight postseason was something very special. Game after game of exciting baseball sparked by an offense that scored runs at an alarming rate and defined by a defense that night after night made you just shake your head in sheer amazement. We begin our look back at 1999 at the most appropriate spot, beautiful Winter Haven, Florida, where we unwrap the winter chill only to prepare, ironically, to play in the cool of October. There's nothing quite like spring training. If you haven't experienced the relaxed pace of spring training, well, believe me, it is something you should seriously consider. A very special time of the year. And joining me now is Indians Executive Vice President and General Manager, John Hart. And John, there is something very special about spring training. Well, Tommy, it, it is. Um, uh, baseball is a timeless game, and spring training uh, probably exemplifies that more than it does during the season, especially in the modern era mm -hmm. with uh, you know the, the big stadiums, difficulty in getting next to the players. Uh, spring training is throwback, uh, really throwback baseball. Uh, the games don't count, which uh, makes for a more relaxed atmosphere. Uh, you know, the players are a lot more casual. Uh, the stadiums are smaller. It's easier to, uh, to get around next to the players, uh, especially ours in Winter Haven. It's, um, uh, it's an older stadium uh, in, a, in a small town. I think it's, uh, it's a very comfortable environment during the day when the, when the fans come out. And, uh, and believe me, they do. Uh, from the time we show up at the ballpark, uh, people are are going around not only looking at the major league setup, but we have our minor leaguers uh, right there uh, on the same site, and uh, so they can see the, see the whole thing. I know this personally, if I were a fan, uh, I would want to come down you know, the first couple of weeks, uh, because that probably is the best time. Uh, you see the club go through a workout. Uh, uh, we have the backfields, and you see guys taking batting practice. You see the staff working on the different plays. And, uh, and then obviously the first few games where uh, it, it truly is relaxed and uh, you get a chance to see a lot of players. So um, uh, we enjoy it, uh, especially until we get down to the last uh, week or 10 days and you have to start making the tough calls. But um, uh, from a fan's perspective, it's the best time of year. John, expectations are always very high for every ball club, but in particular for this one, especially when you go and you add a Robbie Alomar, what were your expectations coming out of camp? Well. It, Tommy, I think over the years, uh, this organization has grown into one of the better clubs. Uh, it seems every year we uh, are one of the perennial favorites that uh, people look at the Indians and, and say, this is a club that uh, is going to be playing late. And uh, we, felt, uh, we felt that way going in. We, we liked the expectations. Uh, uh, there were too many years in Cleveland where there were no expectations. And uh, I know I, I look around baseball at clubs that uh, as they start the year, their agenda maybe isn't what ours is. And, uh, and I think it's, uh, it, it's something that is special. It's what we all work and strive for. But um, uh, our ball club uh, going into the 99 season was, uh, uh, we felt, was a, a contending club. You know, we did make the addition of Robbie Alomar. And, uh, you know, it seems every year we try to add one new face into this core mix that we have. And uh, uh, Robbie came in very excited and uh, certainly uh, gave the club a little different look, uh, not only offensively but defensively, and um, uh, and so I, I think going in we had, uh, you know, the uh, the position player club with an all-star at every position. That uh, if the clubs were to were to stay healthy, that uh, you know what can they do? Uh, we felt going into spring training that our ball club was going to be playing for something in September, and then eventually to October and our ultimate goal, which is the World Series. When it's time to say goodbye to Winter Haven, as we have become accustomed, high expectations greet the Indians as they open the regular season. The energy is rising as opening day draws near. Only one thought consumes the Indians as the journey to October officially begins. If we stay healthy, we can make some noise. Cleveland a 2 nothing lead. One pitch. Well hit the center field, back goes Hunter. He looks up and it is gone. Touch of all time for Manny Ramirez for the first time in 99. 
3-0 Indians. Drive looking for the sweep at the dome. On the ground to Alomar. From his knees, ball game. Mike Jackson will put that baseball in a special place. Save number 100. Hitting third, the second baseman, number 12, Roberto Alomar. A look at second, the pitch. Fryman hits one high and deep to right center. Back goes Dye on the track. This ball is gone! A three-run game-winning homer for Travis Fryman to right center. How about that? What a way to celebrate a home opener. Fryman about to be mobbed at home plate. It truly was a team effort for the Tribe in 99, especially when it came to scoring runs. The numbers are staggering. Four players driving in 100 runs. A team record 1,009 runs scored. The first time a ball club scored 1,000 runs since 1950. 12 grand slams and 28 games where the Indians scored 10 or more runs. Swing a drive to deep right center. Away back, gone again. Second two-run homer in the last two at-bats. The Indians lead it six to three. Manny Ramirez delivers again. He delivers. Alomar punts third base side. Coomer bare hand grab. The throw. Not in time. Hit that one in the gap in left center field. On the run is Kapler. Can't get it. It gets by him and goes to the wall. Lofton around second. He's going to try to motor to third. Here comes the relay. They've got a shot. He's safe. Lofton a triple. And the pitch to Jimmy is drilled to right field. Forget about this one. It's a 6-3 to three ball game. Jim Tomey didn't get under that one. He hit a bullet out of here. And Jim Tomey having a big series against New York. His third home run of the series and number 32 this year. Now the 0-1 pitch. And Vizquel lines one to right center. That's a base hit. Somar Vizquel two for three today. Big turn. Ball bobbled by Cameron. Vizquel to second in safely. How about that hustle? One and two. Hit in the gap in right center field. It's going to run to the wall. One run is in. Two runs will score. They're going to wave Tommy home. Sexton stops with a double. Here comes the throw to the plate. And it's a three-run double on a 5-2 lead. We are joined by Jim Tomey and Richie Sexton. And guys, it's been a great year. Has it been one of the more memorable years for you guys? Yeah, I think so. I mean, just, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've been able to get at bats this year and contribute a little bit to the team, you know, whereas, you know, maybe in past years it was kind of a, a situation where I'd get a September call up and I would play every now and then and, and whatnot. But this year, it's, um, you know, I've been able to get at bats and contribute more more than you know than I could have ever imagined you know coming the year I didn't know how many bats I was going to get or, and whatnot coming in so it's been my most memorable definitely you know I think I think from from my point of view I mean this has been the most memorable because out of spring training we had such a you know we started off to a hot start and then we had some guys go down with some injuries and uh, you know for for our young kids to step up the way they've done and and get that experience for me that's been the most memorable you know and and you know, years like Manny's having and, and Robbie and even Omar. I mean, Omar's had such a great year. What those other two guys have done, it kind of gets overlooked. Mm -hmm. Of course, for you in spring training, you, you became a, a Hollywood star uh, with that commercial. Jim, could you tell me where the restrooms are? Yes. Hold on a minute. They're over there. Hey, do you got the time? Yeah, hold on. Five to two. Hey Jimmy, it's the quickest way out to right field. Yeah, that was that was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. But uh, you know, you need help to do that, and the crowd definitely helped me out in that. Richie, yeah, you know, I can remember we were on the press tour, and uh, it was announced the Indians had signed Will Cordero. I'm sure it was a little bit frustrating, maybe a little unnerving. I mean, did you envision when you heard that news that? you'd be talking about a 30 homer 100 RBI season um no I mean when you hear something like that immediately you know you you think that your bats are gonna you know decrease and that that's the the bottom line but when you know 
at the same time, you got to realize what what's going on here. You know, you got to. I'm a young, unproven player at that time, and uh, you know you can't just you can't just rely on a young, unproven guy throwing him out there when you're trying to win a World Series. You know, so I understood that, and that's the way I went about it. And you know, unfortunately, but fortunately, there was injuries. You know, we you don't ever want that to happen to anybody, but there was some. You know, people got hurt, and and uh, you know that allowed me to get some at bats, and you know you just try to make the best out of it when you get them. You know. Was there a point this year where you got over that hurdle where you said, you know what, I do belong, and now I'm, I'm not questioning whether or not I can stay up here? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, about the midway point when I started to accumulate some at bats and I saw that my numbers were, were decent and that I could build off of them, that's when I, you know, you st confidence with anything you do, you know, no matter what it is, you need that confidence. And uh, the, the at bats, I think, were the main thing for me. You know, I'd always got my at bats in the minors and, and done fairly well, but. It's night and day from the minors to the big leagues, and once I got some at bats and saw that, you know, hey, I think I can't compete here. That's when I that made, kind of made the turning point. Jimmy, I, I mean, for you, in some ways, it was a tough year because, uh, for the most part, you've been healthy in your career, and I mean, with the back and whatnot. Do people understand what maybe you had to go through in '99? Well, it was tough. You know, it was tough when I got the spring training. I worked so hard last off season to get ready and to be ready. You know, obviously Sandy and I stay here all winter long as we always have, and I was probably in the best shape coming into spring training as I've ever been. As the season went on, it got better, and and it just you know periodically through the season it's acted up on me. And and you know in early April, May, and even into June, it was I was playing. You know, it was tough to play, and, and I didn't really tell a lot of people, but also, you know, it, it was a situation where, you know, sometimes your pride gets in the way and you want to you keep playing, and, you know, it's all worked out. You know, if you, the thing about this game is you got to realize you're not going to be healthy every year, and, and sometimes you got to go out and you got to play at 80%. And I look at, you know, from where I've started to where I've ended up, you know, I'm pretty pleased with the year that I've had. I've had a Jim Tomey year, but the expectations have always been great to do better and better that, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with what I've done. And you got voted to the All-Star Game. I mean, it was exactly. your second one in a row. That had to be neat. Well, you know, I, I'll tell you a great story. I mean, my, you know, my dad was there and, and you know, my family and, my, and Andrea was there. And it was, you know, to see my dad when they were introducing the, the All Century team was was just truly a phenomenal time. I mean, you know, to have Ted Williams come out on the field and and you know to be right there when he was talking was you know that's something in my career I'll never forget. A number of scouts called it the most balanced attack they had seen in a long, long time. And at the middle of that attack was Manny Ramirez, the tribe's former number one draft pick. And what a year the young man had! Every time you looked up, there were runners on base. They sure didn't stay there very long as Manny wrote his name into the record books, becoming the first major leaguer to top 160 RBIs since Jimmy Fox in 1938. Manny also replaced the famed Hal Trotsky as the tribe's single season RBI champ. Manny was simply dominating. Payoff pitch swung on, looped into shallow right center. Cruz and Ramirez coming hard. Manny with a sliding catch. Terrific play by Manny. This one drilled to right center field, and this one is trouble. Robbie Alomar going to be waved around. He's going to have to hurry. Here comes the throw, and it's not going to be in time. Manny Ramirez will score Robbie Alomar all the way from first base. The 2 2 pitch. A swing and a drive. Deep left. Away. Way, way back. Two thirds of the way up the bleachers. Manny Ramirez with a club record 164 RBIs on a majestic three run home run. What a way to enter the record books. While Manny supplied the knockout punch, it was the tribe's top of the order. Kenny Lofton, Omar Vizquel, and Roberto Alomar, who set the tone for each game and defined the multi-talented personality of an explosive Indians offense. Covering now, Lofton's going to try to go to third. He'll make it. Boy, that's just pure hustle right there. Omar Vizquel bunts out toward the mound. Flory picks it up. He might as well eat it. 
throws to first wide of the mark. Stanley made a nice diving catch. 1-1 delivery. Alomar hits it high in the air to left. It could be trouble near the line in the corner. And gone. Home run for Alomar. The wind just kept taking that ball toward the pole and toward the porch. And Robbie with back-to-back -back home runs. A three-run shot here. And it is now an 8-3 ball game. What a day for Robbie Alomar. Sometimes in life we are privileged to witness greatness. We count our blessings and we watch in amazement as an artist, or in this case, artists, perform their magic. Omar and Robbie, 15 gold gloves between them. Wizards with the leather, making the difficult play look easy. The spectacular play routine. Almost like ballerinas around the bag. This is why he was an all-star. Ground ball to second base. The flip to Vizcal on the sex and double play. The pitch swung on a smash to second. Alomar flips to second for one. The scales relay double play. To Robbie Alomar over to Vizcal on to first. Double play. Well turned by the tribe. Keystone combination. Here's the 2-1 pitch, and this one chopped towards short. It could be two. Vizcal will take it himself, throw on the run, got him. Great play by Omar Vizcal for a strikeout. Just like that, what a play, Vizcal. Can they turn it? You bet they can. How about that double play? Right the set and pitch. Hit right back up the middle. Vizcal near second, steps on second, hurdles the runner, throws to first for the double play. He's the only one in the game that makes that play. Get on the ground to second. Alomar over to short to Vizquel. The throw. Got him. Oh, what a play by Omar Vizquel. Now the next offering. Swung on a chopper to short. Vizquel to second. There's one. Robbie's relay and inning ending. Double play. Payoff pitch. There goes Davis. Ball hit to second. Robbie will go to second. And Omar. Unbelievable. What a play by Omar Vizquel. The pitch swung on line to second, leaping up. Alomar grabs it. And then Charlie took charge. Ground ball to Vizquel. Spins behind second. Goes at the six and one out. It's amazing to me, the more you watch Omar, he always knows who's running and just how much time he can take to get him by about a step. You know, I could watch that stuff all day long. And with me now is the shortstop half of that priceless pair, all-star Omar Vizquel. And Omar, it's been another terrific year. Do, do any moments really stand out for you? Well, uh, you know, 1999 is just another year, another Central Division. <laughs> you know, uh, we were expecting it, by the way. Uh, I think when we got to spring training, uh, we saw uh, the kind of team we have uh, now with Robbie Alomar playing second base. I think it was going to be a really exciting uh, team. And, uh, you know, we have been showing it on the paper. I think uh, just having those guys uh, on the field is a real pleasure just to play uh, around them. Um, you know, Gene Tommy home run, uh, straight center field, 500 feet, was really amazing this year. I've never seen anybody to hit the ball that far in the center field. Uh, Manny Ramirez, uh, home run uh, in the last row yeah. against uh, the Yankees was amazing. Uh, you know, i never seen, uh, after Maguire hit the ball in the ball, why is it sign? Uh, another home run as long as that one. Robbie Alomar turn, turning double plays. Uh, he make a double play in New York, uh, diving to his to his right and then flipping the glove with the ball with his glove, and then I burn the ball and turning a double play. Since uh, everybody has been talking about the double play combination and stuff, I think that was one of the nicest double plays I ever turned. You know, you talked about you and Robbie and the double play combination. Omar, did it take very long for you guys to get comfortable with each other? Not really. Uh, you know, Robbie's style of game is just about my same style. You know, he improvises a lot. Uh, he go with the instincts. Uh, it doesn't matter who is hitting or who's pitching. He knows where the ball is going to be hit in any different situation. And, uh, you know, it's a pleasure just to see a guy uh, to make the plays he, he make. Um, sometimes you're going to get caught up in uh, uh, just, just kind of watch him, you know, moving and, and jumping and do his stuff. So it, it's a thrill. Well, it's almost though like who can top who because you make every bit as, as many spectacular plays as, as, as Robbie does. It become kind of a, a friendly competition. Well, it, it was nice, you know, it's, uh, like I said before, uh, you know, it's just amazing just to see a guy next to you doing all that stuff, uh, you know. Uh, I have been uh, having a so-so year with the gloves this year. I started really bad, and then, uh, you know, I didn't really get uh, comfortable 
playing uh, uh, on the field. But you know, my I think I was more focused on my offensive year. You know. Uh, <laughs> Just getting hits every time, getting on base, trying to steal some bases here and there. Uh, you just uh, kind of like forgot a little bit my defensive part of the game. But, uh, you know, it's just uh, awesome the type of year that we had. You and Robbie made plays that I don't think any of us have ever seen before. I mean, you turn a double play catching the throw with the bare hand and completing it to first. I mean, do you think about that ahead of time, Omar, or is that, that just natural? That I guess it's just natural. Uh, I mean, you don't have time to think when Robbie dives for a ball and he flips you the ball. Uh, and you just, it's an instinct. You just catch it and try to make the double play as quick as you can. And, you know, not only that one, but any other double plays when he jump in the air or you give the ball to Robbie with your bare hand and, you know, stuff like that. I think it's, uh, it's part of the game. It's what people come to see. As a fan, you just want to see something different every day. Uh, and I think uh, we make it possible for them. We got our first true glimpse of Roberto Alomar in 1999, and it's a snapshot to remember. Whether it was a base running clinic, clutch hitting, or stellar defense, Robbie strengthened his claim as one of the top second basemen to ever play the game. That one caught by Alomar. What a great play by Robbie. He tried from his belly to throw out Catalanato, couldn't do it. But a good play on a sinking line drive off the bat of Davy Cruz. Martinez, the pitch runner goes. Manny takes curveball. Outside throw. Not in time. Alomar with a steal. Back in the Indians now. The lead. Robbie drives it to right center field. You can forget about that one. Touch of all time for Robbie Alomar. Ten. We're joined now by Indian second baseman uh, Robbie Alomar. Robbie, uh, it was a big deal when you signed here. Was the season everything that you had anticipated coming here? Yeah, I anticipate uh, that we were going to have a, a great season. Um, one of the reasons I came here is because uh, we have a great ball club and we have a great organization and, uh, and to play with my brother Sandy. How much, I mean, you guys have talked a lot about it, and, and maybe, I don't know if people made a bigger deal out of it than what it was, but was that a big deal for you and Sandy to be back together again? Well, it was a big deal for us, for the family. Uh, it's, it's always a, a dream for, for two brothers to be playing in the same team. We had the chance when we were, we were in Little League <laughs> and uh, when we were playing in, uh, in the minor leagues. And I, we realized that it was a lot of fun. We want to know how, how it will feel to be in the big leagues, in the big show, playing the same team. And got him. Punch him out, throw him out. The double play puts two up on the board here in the third. He swings, hits a ground ball up the middle. Diving backhanded stop by Alomar. From the seat of his pants, oh. the throw in time. He has done it again. We have completely run out of adjectives. <laughs> We've, in the broadcast booth, we've run out of adjectives to describe some of your plays. I mean, just when we've said, well, we'll never see another play like that, two nights later, you do something else where we go, well, that was better than the one we saw the other night. Have you made plays this year, Robbie, where you even said to yourself, that might be the best I've ever done? I remember the play that I made against Brady Anderson, uh, the last out against the Orioles. I think that's, that's been my... Uh, my biggest play this year. You know, when I go out there and play the game of baseball, I like to play 100%. Every day, in and out, I play the game 100%, or maybe 150%. And uh, when you play hard all the time, you're going to be able to make those kind of plays. And, uh, you know, I, I would believe if I, if I go out there and gain my 100%, and the other guys see me gain my best shot, it's going to rub on them, and they're going to do the same. People are now saying that this may be the best double play combination in the history of the game. Would you agree with that? Uh, I don't know if I, I, I will agree with that. I think we have a shot to be the best combination in the game of baseball. And uh, we have made spectacular play. We have made a lot of double plays. Uh, we have played great defense. and uh, but. I want to say we are the best because I think it's out of respect from, 
for the other guys that play the game for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that we have a great opportunity to be the best. What a treasure chest of memories provided by Robbie Alomar. Robbie was instrumental in the tribe's first half success as they posted a 56 and 31 record at the break, tops in the majors. Nice play at third by Fryman as he scrambles to his feet and throws him out. It's tomorrow night, Eric Milton who came in that trade. Walker drives one to deep left center. Lofton on the run at the wall, he leaps and makes the catch! He has done it again! Line drive center field, base hit. Here comes Ramirez, the Indians win! In the pitch. Swung on and missed. Got him with a changeup. And Jackson ends the ball game, striking out Ken Griffey Jr. Within one, Wilson chops it down the first baseline fair. Headed for the corner, Enrique around first, on his way to second. He's going to try for three. Here comes the relay. He slides. He saved the triple. The pitch, there he goes, up wow. and in. Diaz throw to second, Alomar the tank, out in second! That's blood. How about that? Anar Diaz throwing out Rich Amaral to end the game. Can you believe it? Fires and swung on line toward left, base hit. Jacob Cruz wins the game. Jim Tony scores the winning run. Strike three call. Canseco can't believe it. And Charlie has his third strikeout. They are pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And now the tribe looking to win it here in nine. Line drive. They hit right field. Here comes Lofton around third. He will score. The Indians come back and pull it out. Nine to eight. Amazing. He delivers, and McFarland takes strike three, call the curveball at the knees to end the inning. Lahada awaiting the one-two pitch. Here it comes. Curveball and a beauty. Strike three called. I mean, he is snapping off unhittable curveballs here tonight. We're joined now by Indians pitcher Steve Carse. And uh, Steve, this is a year that I know you've really uh, looked forward to since you were a first-round draft pick. It, Finally, all came together for you, didn't it? Without a doubt. Uh, you know, this year's been really special for me. Uh, the season I'm having, being around the guys on the ball club, uh, the veterans, learning, uh, being able to come from the bullpen to start, you know, from starting, going back to the bullpen, and, and, and being able to help out in, in every different way in the, in, throughout the year. Was there a time where you felt like, hey, you know, I'm healthy. I don't have to worry about the elbow anymore. I'm, I'm back to where I was. Well, I felt like that uh, when I went to winter ball this, this past year uh, and coming into spring training. I finally felt, uh, you know, I got over the hump. I was able to, to come to spring, uh, not worry about anything, go out and, and finally have a good spring and, and, and be healthy and, and show them that I could pitch. Then, of course, uh, everybody was clamoring for you to start and even you wanted to start. Uh, in hindsight, was that a bad decision? Uh, it was tough. I don't know if it was such a, a bad decision. Uh, it was it was such late, so late in the year that uh, that I started. I only got able to pitch three starts and and then had to go back to the bullpen. But uh, you know, I, I enjoy starting. I enjoy relieving. You know, so it's uh, it's a double-edged sword. So uh, wherever I can help the ball club win uh, this year was was starting for a couple games. Was back to the bullpen, and uh, you know, it was very enjoyable. I mean, when you're a starter, if you lose a game, you go, well, I'm the guy that lost it. But if you come in and the starter's pitched well and, and, and you have a bad night and he doesn't get the win, how tough is that? It's tough. Uh, it's definitely a different uh, mental preparation. You know, uh, as a starter that I was before, you know, I used to get ready for the game, go out and pitch from the first inning through the seventh. Uh, you know, down, being down in the bullpen, you know, you're looking at coming in in the sixth, seventh, and eighth inning when, when the game's almost over and, and, and the ball game's tied. Uh, there's really no room for error. Uh, as a starter, you can you can get by with giving up maybe three, four, five runs in a game because your team has a chance to come back. But you know, when your team only has one or two uh, at bats to come back against uh, top-notch closers in a league, you need to go out there and, and do your job and put zeros up on the board. How do you get through the pressure? I mean, you come into a situation, bases are loaded, one out, and it's a tie game. How do you not get there and just go bonkers? Uh, you know, uh, the first couple times this season, coming out of the bullpen in those situations, I was, I was really nervous. But then. 
you know, I, I try not to look at it as pressure. I just try to look at it as going out and uh, making my pitches and, and doing the right things. And, you know, obviously sometimes it's not going to work out, and sometimes it is. Uh, or hopefully most of the time it's going to work out. Uh, and that's how I look at it. I just go out, make my pitches, and, and let the guys in the field help me out. And, uh, you know, usually uh, zeros go up on the board. The solid first half was highlighted by the Indians placing six players on the American League All-Star team for the second year in a row. And once again, it was Cleveland's team whose stars shined the brightest, this time in Fenway Park on a night when tradition-rich baseball paid homage to its past. The numbers for Kenny Lofton in 1999. First ball in play, McGuire beat Schilling, a race to the bag, and Schilling didn't win. Lofton with that great speed is on with an infield single. That's the advantage of the American League over the National League, the speed of the American League, and look for them to use that speed once they get on. But Kenny Lofton painting Schilling to the bag. At one time, the National League was considered the running league. They yeah. stole 23 out of 28 over an 11-year span, but Pudge has stopped that. There goes Lofton again. The throw by Piazza too late. Stolen base for Kenny Lofton. Another Indian. Jim Tomey waiting on deck. Later on in the lineup, Roberto Alomar batting night. Like an Indians road game here at Fenway. <laughs> From catcher cam, the mask of Mike Piazza reaching up to get that pitch to Ramirez in a two-out walk. A couple of managers talking it over there. Jim Riggleman of the Chicago Cubs talking to Bruce Bochy, and here is Jim Tomey. Not staggering numbers, but still worthy of all-star consideration and a guy who's willing to do whatever it takes for his team as he's going to bounce back over to third base. After the injury, the knee injury to Travis Fryman. Dangerous at bat for Schilling here. Tommy, a good high fastball hitter. Oh. Into center field, a base hit. That'll bring Loft into the plate. The American League is out in front as the Cleveland Indians combine for a first inning run here at Fenway. A hit by Lofton, a walk to Ramirez, and the two-out RBI single by Tomey. Guerrero reaching for a pitch, grounds it up the middle, it's Cal! Straight out of the glove! Oh, baby! Come on, Omar, you can smile. That was a heck of a play to save a run. It was quite a night for baseball and for the representatives of the Cleveland Indians, including Charles Nagy, the New England native who was thrilled to be a part of the show. You know, few people really realize the true value of Charles Nagy. One statistic speaks volumes to the consistency that is the career of the former number one draft pick. In the last five years, only two pitchers in all of Major League Baseball have won 15 or more games each season. Only two. One is the sensational Greg Maddox in Atlanta. The other, you guessed it, Charles Nagy. Strike three call. Got him looking, and the inning is over. We're joined now by Indians pitcher Charlie Nagy, and uh, Charlie's been another fun year, hasn't it? Does somebody like yourself who was here in the bad times, uh, do you have a greater appreciation maybe than, than somebody that wasn't here when this club was losing 105? I kind of forgot what that was like. <laughs> no, I, you always remember, you're always constantly reminded of it. Uh, um, whether you, you gain a greater appreciation of it or not, I mean, it's just changing that attitude from the losing to the winning. I can't even remember back to those days and uh, that you know just showing up at the park just you know oh, well we're gonna get our butts kicked again or something like that now it's it's just a total since 94 I mean that whole attitude once we change that um, you know I can't even even think about doing that anymore is it hard not to take winning for granted I guess sometimes you can um, but you still got to go out and do your job and uh, you know baseball is a strange game and uh, if you take things for granted you're gonna they'll come up and bite you so uh, you still have to go out and work hard, and uh, you know it's just part about being a professional. Just go out and do 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 what you have to do to get ready every day or every fifth day, and uh, you do that, you should be okay. You know, in, in some ways, Charlie, do you, do you think the ball club maybe has even been underappreciated? Uh, I don't know so much here, but nationally, I mean, people say, well, you're in the Central Division, yeah. ho hum, you're going to win. I mean, it, 
No, it's not that easy. There's a lot of intangibles that people don't understand uh, as far as the season goes on uh, with injuries, uh, the length of the season. Um, you know, there's a lot of, lot of crazy things that can happen and have happened, have had happen to other teams that we're supposed to win or are supposed to do well, like this year the Dodgers or uh, the Orioles again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, no one can really understand why, why those two high payroll, high talented teams, you know, didn't meet the expectations that were laid upon them at the beginning of the season. But, you know, if we go out and we win our 95, 100 games, you know, we're supposed to do that and we do that, but it's ho-hum, you know, they're in the central division. So what can you do? Charlie, for you, it, it, it's another, you know, 15 to 20 win season. I mean, only you and Greg Maddox now won 15 games six years in a row. Do, do you ever stop and think about that and, and, and what that means? Not really. I mean, you can't really think about things like that. You know, with, with Greg Maddox, it's the way he pitches with me. It's my offense or defense or whatever. Um, you know, and I, you know, it's not my fault if I go out and give up three, four runs a game and the, the opposing pitcher gives up six or seven. Um, you know, am I supposed to apologize for that? <laughs> but, you know, I just go out and try and do my job, you know, and, I'll, you know, once my career is over, set, all said and done, I'll maybe look back and smile or whatever, but right now you really can't do that. Does that bug you, though? I mean, you just said, you know, everybody talks about Greg Maddox, and with you, it's, well, Charlie's winning because of where he is. I mean, it's not just that. I mean, you've become one of the best pitchers in the league. Does it bother you that people don't talk about you in that regard? No, I can't let it bother me. I, I mean, I'm not out there to pitch for other people. I'm out there to pitch for, you know, my teammates and the, the Indians and the fans here. Um, you know, my job is to go out and win those games, and if I, if I can do that, I'll keep everybody happy, and that's all that really matters to me. Joining Charlie and the Tribe's starting staff was Dave Burba, who won 15 games and tossed 200 innings for the second straight season. The Ohio State grad also struck out a career-high 174 batters, fifth best in the league. Ball to go to second base for one, on the first. Double play, and the inning is over. The payoff pitch. A swing and a miss. Now the right-hander straightens the pitch. Swung on and missed. He struck out Chad Kruder. How about that? We're joined now by Indians pitcher Dave Burba. And uh, after a while, do you get tired of everybody always wants to talk about what the Indians don't have? They don't have Randy Johnson. They don't have Roger Clemens. It, it, it really seems like you guys never get a whole lot of credit. No, we don't. Uh, you know, I, I throughout the year, I've kept hearing, you know, we don't have pitching. We don't have this. We don't have that. And it all... It all came back to pitching, and uh, you know, for me, uh, my philosophy is that you don't win a hundred games without pitching. Um, you know, naturally, we don't have a uh, Pedro Martinez or a Randy Johnson or a Kevin Brown. We don't have the big number one guy, but we have four or five quality starters that come at you every day, and then then you throw our lineup in there and. Uh, I think we have a chance to win as well as anybody else, and and I'm I'm not just saying our starting rotation, our bullpen is tremendous too, and uh, that's what it takes to win ball games is pitching. Now that you look back, was this the best thing that happened to you in your career? Even though you left a team that you grew up watching as a little guy. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, anytime you get a chance to play on a, a caliber team that the Cleveland Indians throws out on the field every day, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of that. Um, you know, yeah, I did love playing for the Reds, and it was a thrill for me to be in a, in a Cincinnati Reds uniform. But uh, once I got traded over here and, and, and watched these guys play day in and day out, um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Dave, you've had even a better year uh, than you did last year in the American League. Um, in particular, your, your second half, you've been as good as anybody in the American League. Did you find there was an adjustment for you going from the National League to the American League? Was it... I don't know if easier is the right word this year, but did you feel more comfortable? Yeah, I, I had a better idea of, of uh, the hitters, um, how, how, you know, I'm, I'm the basic type pitcher. I'm going to go out and pitch the same game. I pitch every game. There's no secrets to it. Um, but when you have an idea what guys like, what ball, what, what area their uh, strengths are, and, um, you know, if they like the ball on the inner half or, or the outer half, then you have a better idea. You can tend to stay away from those areas. Uh, I still gave up 30 home runs, but uh, you know I, I always feel if you challenge hitters, you're going to do that, and that's the type of pitcher I am. I, I challenge guys, and I throw a split finger, and if it doesn't work correctly, it's an easy pitch to have a park, and uh, that's basically the story of my season. Uh, you know, if I make a mistake, I might give up a solo home run or two a two-run shot, but. Uh, uh, 
I would say that every game I've gone out and pitched, with the exception of maybe one or two, we've had a, we had an ample chance to win the game. When everybody talks about Dave Berber, the, the first thing they say is competitive. And, well, I appreciate I mean, that. That's you know, a compliment. And, and it is, isn't it? I mean, you go and you may not win that night, but it isn't going to be for lack of competing. No, it's not. Uh, you know, when my when I get the ball, I, I'm, I'm out there to win, and uh, there's nothing else on my mind. Um, not necessarily for me to win, but for my team to win. And whatever it takes, you know, if it takes me to pitch seven innings and, and say I only give up one run, I leave the game, we're, we're losing one nothing. But uh, maybe we score two runs in, in, the, in the ninth, and that's all that's important is we win. And uh, when I get the ball, I want to win. And uh, I feel that the other guys coming up to the plate are trying to, to, to uh, stop me from winning and, and that's that's where I get my drive. Charlie and Dave, a very dependable and well-rounded duo. South Pacific is one of my favorites. I love the music of Rodgers and Hammerstein. I've always preferred Shakespeare. He has such a way with words. I love the irony in Shaw's work. Tennessee Williams. No, that's funny stuff. Damn Yankees. Now that was a great baseball play. The tribe's starting staff was energized by the emergence of Bartolo Colon, who in 1999 staked his claim as the club's number one starter. Bartolo won 18 games, the most for a tribe pitcher since 1988. But it was his development over the second half of the season that cemented the rock-solid right-hander as the tribe's ace. Cologne went 11 and 2 with a 260 ERA and 15 second half starts, including some dominating performances. And the payoff pitch from Cologne. Strike three call. And yes, Albert Bell still gets standing ovations at Jacobs Field. <laughs> with me again is Tribe General Manager John Hart. And at the beginning of spring training, you talked, John, about having two potentially young arms in this organization that can be number one. Speaking of Bartolo Colon and Jared Wright, obviously Bartolo Colon established himself as one of the real up-and-comers. Jared had a very difficult uh, season. Now they're both still 23, 24 years old. But does it to you look like Colon has taken that next step, John? Well, Tommy, it, it does. Uh, uh, we, we felt very fortunate going into this year uh, that we had these two youngsters. Uh, they both had uh, shown signs of success. Uh, Bartolo started to take off a little bit at the end of the 98 season, had a good postseason. Jared obviously had the real big 97 postseason at the end of the 97 season. And, uh, you know, obviously two of the more desirable pieces of a ball club are two young pitchers that are power arms. Obviously, as the year unfolded, uh, Bartolo, after a little bit of a slow start, uh, really took off. Uh, had, a, had a great second half and uh, won a big postseason game for us. And, uh, um, and I think has established himself as, uh, as one of the premier young pitchers. Uh, it was almost like a tale of two cities because mm -hmm. Jarrett, uh, obviously the, the great success that Bartolo enjoyed, Jarrett had just the opposite. Um, uh, his year was one of frustration uh, and I think one of disappointment. And, uh, and I think in the case of Jarrett with his talent, uh, he underachieved a little bit. Um, uh, you know, there's a, there's a saying in baseball that uh, you, you show the, the greatest patience with young pitching. And, uh, and obviously, we're going to continue to do that with Jarrett. But uh, this, uh, this was Jarrett's second full year in the big leagues. And, uh, and obviously, uh, we had hoped for a little bit more. And uh, I think part of what we hope this winter uh, that we can do with Jarrett is to not only help him mechanically and physically, but also mentally, that uh, he starts to mature a bit. He recognizes some things he needs to do and, um, and is able to come back in the year 2000 and, and, and meet that potential. We're going to try to hold our patience. Obviously, you know, it uh, dovetails back to our expectations and, uh, uh, you know, how long can we afford to wait? Um, but at the same time, if you're going to wait, if as an organization you're going to wait on anything, you're going to wait on young power pitching. Now, John, this is kind of a double-edged sword here. Uh, how pleased were you with what the farm system was able to provide? But on the other hand, were you that interested in seeing how much the farm system had with all of these injuries? 
Well, Tommy, player development uh, is a very big part of who we are, and uh, it's also a very big part of how we've arrived at this point uh, in the evolution of this franchise. Uh, I don't think um, in my wildest dreams <laughs> that uh, I would have expected uh, the numbers of injuries to star players that we had this year, uh, not only position players, but pitchers. Um, Sandy Alomar goes out early in the season, Enar Diaz steps in, and does a fabulous job uh, catching, throwing, developing as a uh, as a receiver, calling games, swinging the bat. His energy, his life. Uh, uh, he could be a mini MVP on our ball club. Uh, um, you know, I, I I look at uh, our outfield situation when uh, uh, when Kenny goes down, you're able to bring Jacob Cruz and then Dave Roberts. Uh, Alex Ramirez stepped in and contributed for us. Uh, Enrique Wilson filled in when Travis Fryman went down. Um, John uh, McDonald. John McDonald <laughs> comes in uh, is another one. Uh, Sean DePaula steps in uh, late in the season and gives us a real lift. Uh, by giving these, these kids a chance as, as they earned that chance, um, it, it does give us uh, that opportunity as we go forward uh, to, to feel very good about where we're going. Once again, Indians fans reign supreme in the game of baseball. So much so that the Sporting News named Cleveland the number one baseball city in America, thanks to another sold out season, which peaked with 373 consecutive sellouts. And Cleveland led the American League in total attendance with 3.46 million. Baseball's best fans providing the 10th man spark. Pull the number for the last regular season game of the century here at Jacob Field. For the first time since they have won five straight American League Central Division titles, the Tribe did not get to celebrate properly. The second place Chicago White Sox lost to the Anaheim Angels as the Indians were on an airplane heading to play the White Sox at Comiskey Park. No champagne spring celebration that night, so the team had to wait until their first home game after clinching the division title to celebrate appropriately. But the true celebration came in a most different fashion, thanks to the multi-talented Mark Langston, whose love of rock and roll music was shared with teammates. Fun night at Nautica. It was a beautiful evening on the banks of the Cuyahoga River, and it was another sold out event for the tribe. All for the benefit of Cleveland Indians Charities, the charitable arm of the organization which funds numerous youth education and recreation programs. And a special thanks to Cleveland legend Michael Stanley and Seattle's Magic Bus for making that night a smash hit on the charity fundraising circuit. The Indians were the first team to clinch a spot in the postseason. Now it's time to turn our attention to the playoffs. Only a precious few are left standing when the October colors become the backdrop of the postseason. It is a time to celebrate the achievement of mastering the six-month journey. But more accurately, it's a time when the unpredictable takes center stage. And the 1999 American League Division Series was just that and more the pitch to him and he hits one high and fairly deep to left center racing back justice near the wall jumps up and makes the catch now Garcia Paras all the way around second Robbie Alomar's relay to first double play tying run at the plate and Tomey into right field track wall tied the wind and the next delivery a swing and a miss, struck him out with the heat. 11 strikeouts for Cologne. 
Now the pitch. A swing and a line drive. Base hit into left. Here comes Ramirez. The Indians win. Freeman has delivered a game-winning single. Travis Freeman with his first ever postseason RBI. What a way to start this 99 playoff run. That one is hit deep down the right field line. Two pitch, swung on a miss. He chased ball three. Another breaking ball, low and away. But Buford ran after it. The pitch to Tommy, high and deep, way back. Get out of here. Gone for Tommy. A grand slam home run, and the Indians lead it, 11 to one. Old pitch swung on, chopped toward third, back into by Fryman. He's playing deep. The long throw in time. Oh. Travis Fryman is back. The pitch, a swing and a drive to deep right center. This ball is going. Go! Harold Baines has become Cleveland's newest adopted son. Well, these fans enjoying the moment as well they should. The pitch. Swung on, popped up on the infield, second base side. Wilson calling and catching. Tribe is up to zip as Mike Jackson cruises through the night. And the Indians today destroy Boston by a final score of 11 to 1. On the ground, back to Burma. He goes to second for one. Alomar's throw in time, and that's a double play to end the inning. Well, the Indians hold a one to nothing lead as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Jarrett Wright continues to throw in that Indians bullpen. Watch Dave Burba after releasing this pitch to Mike Stanley. Comes off the mound. He's obviously in some discomfort right there. He starts cranking the right arm around. Came off the mound, back to the third base dugout here. Very upset. As I mentioned, Jarrett Wright continuing to throw in the Indians bullpen perhaps would indicate that Burba's afternoon is finished. Ballantin puts a charge into one straight away center field. Often looks up Boston leads. One ball and one strike. And a high drive well hit into left center field. Lofton at the wall and it's off the wall. Are they calling? for Valentin and foul ground. We go to game four tomorrow. Line into left center field, and that is a base hit. Rounding third and scoring is Veritek right behind him is Lewis. 20 runs in a game tonight for the Red Sox. Season record in the history of Major League Baseball. Will Pedro heal in time to get the ball tomorrow night? That'll be the most asked question from now until tomorrow in this city. And the foul Brown Sadler has it. That's at a 23-7 route as they try to reverse the curse. This series is even at two games apiece. So it's 0-2, the pitch to Vizquel. Line toward left field line. It's a fair ball. Bounces toward the corner. Lofton scores. Vizquel into second with a sliding double. Now Travis Fryman hits it high and deep to left. This ball is well hit. O'Leary near the wall looking up. It is.
10 home run. And with that, the Red Sox take an 11 8 lead. Nobody thought it would end this soon in October. Now the 0 2 pitch. A swing and a miss. The ball game is over. The Boston Red Sox will mob Pedro Martinez on the mound. Six innings of hitless relief. The Red Sox have moved on to the American League Championship Series as they eliminate the Cleveland Indians by a final score of 12 to 8. A season comes to an end too soon. A season filled with success, a season of spectacular individual achievement and memorable team performances. As we say goodbye, let's take one final look at the greatest hits of 99. His second at bat, the pitch. Curveball swung on, hit high, hit deep, way back. This ball gone. A three-run homer and a borrow a phrase from Al Michaels. Do you believe in miracles? Now the 3-1 pitch to Veritek. Swung on, ground ball toward the middle. Back in by Alomar from the outfield, spinning, throwing, in time! He's done it again! Swung on, chopped to the right side, Alomar diving to his left, has it, backhanded flip, in time to get Houston at first. Malone rocks and fires. McFarland, he drills one to deep center field. Lofton is back on the track, leaps at the wall and makes oh. the catch! What a grab by Lofton! Runner goes, pitch swung on line to second, diving is Alomar, it's by him into right center. Lofton is up with it, to third is Hawking, he'll try to score. Here's the relay by Alomar to the plate, the slide he is, out at the plate! How about